Hey friends, God bless, God bless, amen, God bless. Let's get our Bibles. We're going to read chapter 6 of Genesis today, amen. Chapter 6, we'll be discussing the flood. Glory to God, hallelujah. It is 22 verses, glory to God. So we went through the descendants in chapter 5. Hallelujah. Now we're going to get into chapter 6, which we'll be discussing the flood. As I said, amen. Let's give the Lord thanks and get into this reading. Let's get our Bibles and let's read together. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word. We thank you for this, this chapter that we're going to get into. May you open up our hearts to receive your word in Jesus name we thank you Lord may you help guide us through this reading in the mighty name of Jesus we give you thanks amen amen so I'm gonna read this word in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit amen and it says and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair. And they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with men, for that he also is flesh, yet his day shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of Reon. And God saw that the wickedness of men was great in the earth, that and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it, and it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. And it grieved him at, at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Jephaheth. Jeph the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me, for earth is filled with violence through men, through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Runes shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be three hundred cubits, the breadth of it fifty cubits, and the height of it thirty cubits. A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in the cubit shalt thou finish it above, and the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof with lower second and third stories shalt thou make it and behold i even i do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh wherein 
is the breath of life. For under heaven, in everything that is in the earth shall die. But when the but with thee will I establish my covenant, that thou shalt come into the ark, though, and thy sons, and thy wife, and thy sons' wives with thee. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shall thou bring into the ark, to keep them alive with thee, thou shalt be male and female. Of fowls after their kind, and of cattle after their kind. Of every creeping thing of the earth shall this kind, two of every sort, shall come into unto thee, to keep them alive. And take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be for food for thee and for them. Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Amen. Hallelujah. So, that is it. Let's go and review this now. Okay, so we're going to go over this. Um, verses 1 and 2 of chapter 6, it says, And it came to pass, when men begot, began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men. That they were fair. And that they took them wives of all which they chose. Choose. Right? And the Lord... Okay. We'll stop there. So, so many view these groups as... Okay. The sons of God and the daughters of men. As a way of describing the descendants of Cain and the descendants of Seth. Uh, the assumption then is that the descendants of Seth are God following people. Amen. Seth is God following people. Why the descendants of Cain are not. Remember Cain killed his brother. His descendants are not. If this is the case, then the events described here represent a mingling of the godly and the ungodly, right? Other interpretations of this passage include the idea that these are marriages between angels and humans, or between aristocrats and uh, commoners, rich and poor. Um, Amen. So verse 3, it says, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with men, for that he also is flesh. Yet this day shall be a hundred and twenty years. So a hundred and twenty years likely refers to in the time remaining between this announcement of judgment and the coming of the flood. Amen. There were giants in the earth in those those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. Ren Ren Renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of his thoughts of his heart were only evil continually. So we see here that humanity's evil is far more than a surface of foolishness. Right? Far more greater. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This says that there was giants in the earth in those in those days. So they're mingling with the daughters. They had children and they became mighty men. Amen. Which were of old. Men of renown. 
And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth. So we're seeing how wicked the earth was, right? And that every imagination, everything that they thought, right, and or imagined of his heart was evil continually. So they were just nothing but continuous evil. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to jump down to verse 11 and 12, and it says, The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. So it was all violence, everything was corruption, right? So the earth described as corrupt, right? The Hebrew word for translated here is rich in meaning rich in meaning it was used to describe a shirt that was stained too badly to be used or a clay pot that was mared in the production process making it unusable like a stain that you can't get out amen that's how bad it was amen glory to god hallelujah 14 to 16 it says make thee an ark of gopher wood rooms shalt thou make in the ark thou shalt pitch it within and without with pitch and this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of the length of the ark shall be the 300 cubits in breadth of 50 cubits in the height of it 30 cubits a window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above, and thereof above. And the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof, with lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. Amen. So Noah receives the detailed instructions that he is to follow in building the ark here. The ingredients are goofer, Goofer wood and pitch. While the Bible doesn't give enough detail to how exactly or what the ark looked like, it probably was shaped like a shallow uh, rectangular box topped with a roof with an 18 inch space under the roof. It, um, <sighs> interrupted only by roof supporters so that light could get into the vessel for from every side this design would use space efficiently and would have been stable in the water amen hallelujah and behold i even i do bring a flood of water upon the earth to destroy all flesh where wherein is the breath of life for under heaven and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee will I establish my covenant. And thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons, and thy wife, and thy sons' wives with thee. This is what God's saying. You guys should come into my ark, and I shall make my covenant. Amen. With them. Glory. So this is the first use of the word covenant. Um, which refers to a binding promise. Amen. It it will mean safety for Noah and his family, even in the midst of this tragic judgment. Amen. That he will be protected. Glory to God and his family. And we see here that they brought two of every, every animal here and every living thing of all flesh, two of every, every sort shall be bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee. Amen. So they had two of everything. Shall be male and female, right? To produce. Of uh, fowls, like yeah, birds, cattle, of all kind. Every creeping thing of the earth shall, after his kind, two of every sort shall come into thee to keep thee alive, so that they will be safe and alive, right? And take unto thee of the, f of the food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be food for thee and for them. Then it says that Noah did according to all that God commanded him. So he, so so did he. So he did everything God commanded him. Amen. Glory to God. He made the boat. He got on the boat. He, he 
he you know God made the covenant to start with him the binding promise with with Noah he was righteous you know God used him and his family saved them in two of every animal amen glory to God but that is the story of the flood hallelujah that is chapter six guys uh glory to God um I already want to get into chapter 7 now. Glory to God. But that is for tomorrow. Until tomorrow we will read chapter 7. And uh, let's see what happens. Let's see what this Bible says. Okay. It doesn't say a title. But... Okay. Yeah. So it's 24 verses tomorrow that we'll be reading for chapter 7. But... Um, can't wait to read some more with you tomorrow, guys. But that is it for chapter 6. Let's give the Lord thanks. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this chapter. We thank you for all, all your words of wisdom, Father. We thank you for this reading. Father, I pray that you continue to guide us through these readings. In Genesis, Father, open it up our minds and hearts to receive your words, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the mighty name, amen. 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 Sorry, I'm all stuffed up. But um, that is chapter 6. Shalom, shalom. Peace be with you, my brothers and sisters. Until tomorrow, may the Lord bless you always, keep you safe, keep on edifying you. I suggest you go over this chapter yourself and also meditate and go slow on each verse. And, you know, whatever sticks out to you, write it down, study it, pray over it, ask the Spirit to help you with it so you can go deeper into it. I'm just reading and giving you a little bit of uh, of uh, study part of this but you should also do your own research do your own reading and meditation on the word amen glory to god and see what the lord reveals to you amen glory to god but it was great to read with you until tomorrow my friends uh god bless you okay if you like this video please hit the like button and share the gospel because that is what it is about is to share the gospel uh for those who want to hear the word those who are interested in to read amen that's what it is about to get god's word around people read the bible read the 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 word of the lord it has power amen uh faith comes from the word the hearing of the word right so let's hear the word of god amen god bless you friends amen bye